Hey there everybody, good morning, welcome to this installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your humble host, back from a, um, I won't call it a day off yesterday, a day of no video yesterday. How about that? I did throw that quote out there uh, for you and then went and, you know, did my part trying to help the doctors figure out what's going on, but it was, eh, it wasn't so bad. A little bit of work, but not so bad. So, uh, I hope you had a, a, a great Thursday, a thankful Thursday. That's usually our admonition on Thursdays to find something to be thankful for. Actually, it's a pretty great way to start the day every day and a great way to start watching this video. Whether you're watching live or watching on the replay, just to leave a comment down there, say hi, uh, how you doing, like the shirt, watching, whatever. Just let me know that you're here. That encourages me and gets you set up to continue or be updated in the conversation as it develops uh, across Facebook. So there's Joe. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for being here. So this uh, it's Friday, so that means free coaching Friday. Teased that a little bit yesterday. And so here's what I've got for us today. So all week this week, we've been talking about a mindset, right? That mindset that I believe I can, therefore I can. That, that That's kind of the idea. And so today, I want to share a story um, that helps illustrate that and maybe illustrate why this is such a difficult thing for folks to get their head wrapped around. If you follow baseball, well, I don't know. I You know, I realized, and here's something else that will make you feel less young. <laughs> I realized last night that there are people driving cars today that were not alive when 9-11 happened. How's that? All right. So I said that because this quote comes from 1995, and I started to say if you follow baseball at all, but I know now there's a possibility that I'm older. Anyway, in 1995, this fellow named Chipper Jones, playing baseball for the Atlanta Braves, got Rookie of the Year. And he was interviewed by Sports Illustrated and made this quote, or made this statement, that I like to quote a lot. Um, and it's this idea of necessary arrogance. Right? When we talk about the mindset of, of success and the mindset of being able to achieve what it is I'm looking to achieve, we have to also talk about this idea of necessary arrogance, right? And while we haven't really used those words this week, it's very probable that you have thought, oh, I'm not that good. I don't know that I'm going to do it. I don't, whatever, right? That you're, you're creating a self-limiting belief. So this, this idea of necessary arrogance that Jipper shared with us, is what counteracts that, or at least balances that. And the idea was, as he was expressing it, that um, I have to have a level of confidence when I go to bat that I'm going to hit the ball. I'm going to hit a home run, actually. That's what he said. I have to have a level of confidence that allows me to believe that I'm going to hit a home run off of this pitcher even though he struck me out every time I've ever faced him. And that's what he described as necessary arrogance. Now, if you look up uh, arrogance, and I had it looked up here and misplaced it. If you look up the word arrogance, it's this overinflated belief in oneself, something along those lines. And I think that's why we have such a hard time with it. We're trying to not overinflate ourselves. We've been taught, you know, oh, you know, don't do that. That's bad, right? But there's a level of this, well, I know I'm going to do it, right? That has to come along with being able to reach a higher plane of success. And so we talked about this a little bit on Wednesday, uh, both on and off the coffee shop show, but the, uh, I think there's a, a strata, a level of success, a level of accomplishment where people operate, where we look at them and think, well, oh, man, he's a real jerk. He's not a very nice person. Um, she sacrificed a lot to get there. I don't know if I'm willing to do that. 
right? So there's this whole strata of people. I'm thinking, I mean, really thinking the, the, the Jeff Bezos, the Mark Cubans of the world, people who have made a great deal of accomplishment. And then you look at them and think that they're not, I don't want to be that kind of person, right? Well, what is it about them that you don't want to be? Most of them come across pretty arrogantly. And I think if, I mean, yes, there are certainly aspects of some of them that we don't want to duplicate, right? But I think by and large, the personality characteristic that we identify in them and choose not to, I mean, we say we don't want to be like that, is this arrogance. And in fact, it is this level of arrogance that has helped them achieve that level of success. Might not be shooting to be a Jeff Bezos or a Mark Cuban of the world, but you are shooting to be the best in your slice of the market. And you'll never be able to be the best in your slice of the market until you believe that you're the best in your market. And that belief has to almost come across as a swagger. You know, when, Wednesday night, I was talking to uh, the owners of a new business, relatively new business here in town. And they made a statement to me that really confirmed for me that they're going to do very well. And that statement, it was just kind of an offhanded, you know, it, it wasn't even the point of the sentence, right? But the statement was along the lines, we know we're the most expensive in town and we we always will be. All right, how, how can you have a brand new startup and know that you're the most expensive product offering in town and be okay with that? All right, because you know you're the best. And when you know you're the best, it shows. It shows in the way you speak about your business. It shows in the way you write about it. Um, I mean, think about it this way. If I said to you, well, I'm... I'm reasonably, uh, yeah, I, I think we can get a result for you in, in six months or so. Or, that's one way, or, oh, absolutely, I've seen this many times, I think we can get there very quickly. Might take six months to implement, but you'll be solidly on your way. Which one of those do you want to hire? I mean, it's really not much of a contest, is it? So, Check yourself. Here's the coaching for today. Free coaching Friday. Check yourself when you're talking about, and, and I talk about your business, but look, it's the business of you. It's me incorporated, right? <clears throat> Check yourself when you're talking about your business or your capabilities. One of the things, I mean, I've had numerous people tell me this, right? Or just kind of make this statement. Is there anything you don't know how to do? Yeah, there's plenty I don't know how to do, but there's very few things I won't take on. Think about that, right? What are you checking? What are you not doing? Because you are self-limiting yourself, we'll call it that. All right, let's check some of the comments here. Uh, so, yeah, Jeremy, I don't know either. I'm going to have to check on that, see if there's anything I can do on my end. But thank you. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad Jeremy made it here. Yeah, and, and so that's a good point too, Jeremy. There's a difference in being conceited and being convicted, right? Conceited is unfounded. Uh, but, but, you know, having confidence that, uh, that I can achieve a result for you, that's not conceited. That's just confidence. But, uh, and I, that, that's probably a very good word for it, Jeremy. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Conceited is what my grandmother always told me not to be. <clears throat> but then I heard somebody else say one time, it ain't bragging if you can back it up. Right? So I think maybe that's the difference. Right? That that there's conceit, which is unfounded. I mean, I'm I'm overinflating myself for no basis. And then there's uh just being confident that you can achieve that outcome. So I think most of your detractors also, if anybody, so Jeff Bezos said one time, if you don't have haters, you're not working hard enough, <laughs> right? So if they're, if, if the people that are giving you a hard time, right, that are being critical of the work that you're doing, they're probably not as confident in their own, 
I mean, that's, that's just bullyism 101, right? If I'm not confident in me, then I attack you. I don't attack people around me. Why should I? Don't need to. Right? All right. Joe says, self-destructive behavior can often be associated with hidden obstacles. And that is often called, yeah, junk in the trunk. Yeah, I mean, I'm dragging all this stuff around with me. And I'm the only one living in the past. And that, well, that's worth a whole nother show right there. Let's go back to the baseball example for a minute, right? Chipper Jones, every time he faced this pitcher, the pitcher strikes him out, right? So he could drag that around with him all the time. And, and just like an old suitcase, every time he gets up to bat in front of this pitcher, he's like, well, I'm not going to hit him this time either. And the probability is that he won't. Wouldn't. Because he'd already decided in his mind that he wasn't going to be able to. Right? Just decide. I, I mean, honestly, I can't tell you how much easier it is when you have that level of confidence. I mean, I, I, I'll, here, I'll share, share this story with you. Kind of as a parting story. I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and tried to get people uh, to engage me in one-on-one -on -one coaching. And did all right, but didn't have the kind of results that I really wanted. And then uh, I had somebody call me. One, one of those uh, efforts, one of those presence things paid off. They called me, asked me about a situation, and up the engagement uh, in, um, signed up for an engagement, a coaching engagement. Well, then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, people are calling me. Throw your shoulders back, you know, walk around a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'm on to something here. And then just like bang, 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 three more in the same week. And it, and it wasn't, they didn't all call me. I called some of them, took one of them to lunch, right? But the, the point is, you know, I, I can be here like this and, and kind of reserved and well, maybe you'd like to work with me. Or I can say, look, you know, the book's almost full, but I think I can make room for you. What a big difference, right? What a big difference. And that's, that's what I want you to see. That's what I want you to carry across in the way that you talk about your business, your product, and your offering in the coming week. It's Friday. That means the weekend is coming up. No shows over the weekend, but I will be back on Monday with another brand new installment. Hey, listen, if you get value from our time here together to, yeah, Eric says, best time for the next sale is right after the last sale. If you get value from our time together, I'd like for you to consider doing two things for me. Please, one is to share this video with somebody that could benefit from it. Just go down in the comments, put their name in there. Tag, you know, kind of tag their name so Facebook will put it in their feed so they can see it. The other thing, I've had a link down in the description for some time now to um, my Patreon page. If you would like to be a supporter of what's going on here, I would appreciate it if you go over and check out the options that are available there. That just, that's just a way for you to help support me and what I'm doing here. I would appreciate it if you would consider it. We'll be back Monday with another brand new installment, seven minutes in the morning. You guys have a great weekend. I will talk to you on Monday.